Usually when a client comes to me wanting to set up a structure to hold, manage, and protect their wealth for the benefit of themselves, their heirs, and future generations, they all want to set up a trust. It's rare that a client tells me they want to set up a foundation, although foundations generally accomplish the same thing as a trust, but in a more streamlined structure. Now, the reason for this is that trusts are just more well-known than foundations. When I tell clients about foundations, they always want to understand the differences between trusts and foundations and know which one is better for their situation. And that's the key, which one is better for their situation, because I can't say that a trust is better than a foundation or a foundation is better than a trust because it's situation dependent. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. Now, there's a lot of technical differences between trusts and foundations, but generally clients don't care about those. They want to know which is going to be better for them. And in this episode, I'm going to do my very best to do just that. For most clients, the big difference between a trust and a foundation is the fact that trusts require a third-party trustee, whereas a foundation is managed by their board of directors or board of counselors. Whether it's a board of directors or a board of counselors depends on which jurisdiction you're forming the foundation in some jurisdictions call the board members, directors, other counselors. But the point is, trust need a third party trustee. Foundations don't because they're managed by a board. It's essentially an all in one structure. When you set up a trust, the settler, who's the person setting up the trust, transfers assets to a third party trustee. That trustee then holds and manages the assets for the benefit of the beneficiaries pursuant to the terms of the trust agreement that was signed between the settler and the trustee. Now, like I said, the complexity with trust is that they require a third-party trustee. Now, this essentially gives you two options, right? You can either hire a professional trustee, which is exactly what it sounds like. A professional trustee is a trust company that is in the business of managing trusts for people. Sometimes these trust companies manage thousands of trusts for clients all over the world. Now, the benefit of this is it's a professional trust company, right? They know what they're doing and they're set up to manage trusts, right? So they're usually going to do a very good job at it. The downside is you're giving up control by transferring your assets to this professional third-party trustee. So what's the alternative? The alternative is you set up what's called a private trust company. Now, a private trust company is exactly what it sounds like. It's a private trust company set up by you specifically to manage your trust. Now, the issue is most private trust companies are set up as companies. Now, the benefit of this is if you set up this private trust company, for example, and you're the shareholder, you can elect the board of directors and therefore elect who's going to be controlling your trust. Maybe you're on the board of the private trust company. Maybe some of your family members are. Maybe there's some prof professionals. The problem is you own the private trust company, right? And the shares in that private trust company are an asset, which you could lose in a lawsuit, for example. You also have estate planning issues to contend with. Who's going to inherit the shares when you die? How are you going to make sure that those shares are transferred to whoever you want to own them? By a will? If so, then those shares are going to have to go through probate, which can take a long time and may disrupt the operations of the private trust company. So how do you solve this? A lot of times this is solved by having the private trust company owned by a second trust or a foundation. The problem is if you have it owned by a second trust, you have the same problem with a trustee. You either need another private trust company, in which case, you know, this goes on and on and on with this problem, or you hire a professional trustee, in which case you're also giving up some, some control. So the foundation, specifically what's called a purpose foundation, is a nice solution because a purpose foundation doesn't have beneficiaries. It exists just for a purpose, and the purpose would be to own the shares of the private trust company. You as the founder of the foundation could elect the board of the foundation, which would then vote the shares of the private trust company and, and elect that board. So the private trust company will give you 
the control you want with a trust if you don't want a, a professional trust company. With a foundation, on the other hand, the founder, who's the person setting up the foundation, like a settler with a trust, transfers assets to the foundation. The foundation then holds and manages those assets pursuant to the foundation's governing documents. Now, the foundation is managed by its own board of directors or councilors, depending on which jurisdiction it's set up in. There's no separate trustee needed. Now, this simplifies everything because it's an all-in-one solution. The best way to think of a foundation is as a corporation, but instead of having shareholders, it has beneficiaries. The foundation is what we call an orphan structure. It's not owned by anyone. It's completely standalone. Now, here's a few other differences between trusts and foundation that may be important to some people. Trusts generally offer more privacy. Now, the reason for that is because trusts are not incorporated entities. They're contracts between the settler and the trustee. Because they're contracts, they're private documents and generally aren't registered anywhere. Often not even the government knows that a trust exists, except for in some jurisdictions that have trust registers that require trusts to be registered or that have beneficial owner registers for trusts that requires the beneficial owners of trust to be registered. Now, foundations, on the other hand, are incorporated entities. So the registrar of companies knows they exist and generally knows who the founder, the board, the guardian, and the beneficiaries are. Also, those people are generally required to be entered into the jurisdiction's beneficial owner register. So you have a lot less privacy because foundations are incorporated entities. So the government needs some information about the parties involved, whereas trusts are contracts and private documents and the government in most jurisdictions doesn't even know they exist. Also, depending on which jurisdiction the foundation set up in, some of the people involved with it may be publicly available. So, for example, some jurisdictions may make the council or the board of directors public information or the founder public information. Other jurisdictions don't make any of the people uh, public, but they do make public that the foundation exists when it was registered in this registered address. Now, because trusts aren't actually legal entities, like I said, but contracts between the settler and the trustee, trust assets can't be titled in the name of a contract, right? They have to be titled in the name of the trustee who's going to be the legal owner of them for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Now, this creates a problem that because if you ever change trustees, all the trust assets will need to be retitled in the name of the new trustee. This is especially a pain with bank accounts because they'll often need to be reopened in the name of the new trustee and all new KYC done, which we all know is a massive pain in the ass. With foundations, on the other hand, because they're incorporated legal entities, the assets are titled in the name of the foundation and not the trustee. If you change board members, it doesn't matter. The assets stay titled in the name of the foundations. And changing a trustee is not always so easy because a lot of times the outgoing trustee doesn't want to lose the business because they're losing money and will fight to keep it. And so they'll try to say things like, oh, we're not going to leave before we are indemnified or something like that to try to block being replaced. Whereas changing out board members on a foundation is much easier. They don't have any right to try to stay on if they're replaced pursuant to the governing documents of the foundation. So another thing to keep in mind is who the board or the trustee has a duty to, right? So trustees of a trust hold and manage the trust's assets for the benefit of the beneficiaries, meaning that the beneficiaries are the economic owners of the trust asset and the trustee is the legal owner of the trust assets. As such, the beneficiaries have an interest in the trust assets and the trustees have a fiduciary duty to the beneficiaries. So beneficiaries can sue the trustees for violating their fiduciary duty, which often means trustees err on the side of caution when making investments and things like that because they don't want to be liable for potentially having violated their fiduciary duty. With foundations, on the other hand, the beneficiaries generally don't have an interest in the foundation's assets. The board has a fiduciary duty to the foundation itself, not the beneficiaries, meaning that the beneficiaries generally can't sue the board for a breach of fiduciary duty. 
as such, but foundations are generally much better for riskier investments because the board doesn't have the fiduciary duty towards the beneficiary. Now, there's also tax considerations that you need to think about. Some countries consider foundations to be corporations for tax purposes, for example, whereas trusts generally aren't taxable entities. This can mean that foundation income may be subject to income taxes where a trust income may not be. But again, this depends on which jurisdiction the trust or foundation is in. Also, some countries don't have foundation laws. So their tax and legal systems have a hard time classifying foundations for tax purposes, which can create some problems. Some countries may treat them as companies, whereas others treat them as trusts. Well, companies are generally taxed very differently than trusts, so this can have a substantial tax impact. So which is better? I'm going to try to break it down in simple terms because it's not cut and dry. If you want maximum privacy, a trust is definitely the way to go. If you live and a majority of your assets are in a common law country or countries, then a trust is probably better because their tax and legal systems know how to deal with trusts. If you live and the majority of your assets are in civil law countries, a foundation is probably going to be better because their tax and legal system knows how to deal with them better. If you want to invest assets in riskier investments, a foundation is probably better because of the fiduciary duty issue I mentioned before. And if you don't want the beneficiaries to have an interest, then a foundation is going to be better. Anyway, I hope that you found this latest episode informational and useful. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in in future episodes. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.